hälsa. När jag fick frid, när jag fick den heliga anden, så visste jag att jag också blev förlåten alla mina synder. Så du kanske är precis som jag har varit. Känner att du har begått synd som är omöjlig att, att få överstyrken. Du kanske sitter på bördor, du kanske sitter på sjukdomar, du kanske sitter på depression av olika slag eller psykisk ohälsa. Eller indirekt sjukdom. Jesus vill bota dig. Han vill möta dig idag. Så jag vill uppmana dig av hela mitt hjärta. Lyssna noga på vad Herren har lagt på vår broders hjärta idag. Öppna ditt hjärta för Jesus idag. Öppna dina öron. För Gud vill ge dig något här idag. Gud vill signa dig. Amen. 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 Halleluja. Well, our God is good. You know, uh, I preach on the streets and I always see the Lord move in mighty ways. And uh, Sweden, I'm just praying that God would do the same in this city. I know from what I've read and what I heard that Sweden is a, is a city that is now uh, infiltrated with a lot of religions. A lot of people claim uh, to either be atheist or claim to be Muslim. And there's a very small group of Christians. I don't know if it's true. Is that true? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, well, praise the Lord. We're going to just touch on some of those things first and foremost because I do know that God is is alive and God wants to, to, to save this city. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be here. There's a reason why I'm here. There's a reason why you're here. And I can tell you the reason why Jesus Christ came. Jesus came to set the captive free. Amen. Number one, he came to set the captive free. There are so many people living in this city that are not free. They're not free. They have religion, but they're not free. They have money, but they're not free. They have relationships, but they're not free. And I know about this personally, but just by being in ministry for so many years, I know that the smile on many people's faces right now is not genuine. I know that the religious practices that people go through every Friday, Juma prayer, uh, Sundays, pray the Hail Mary, I know there's something still missing in their lives. They're going through motions just because it's what they were taught to do. And you have to understand this, that a lot of people really don't know that there is a God that can set them free. They don't believe it because they have not experienced it. I've experienced this when I was 17 years old, and my story starts with a Muslim. Did you know that? My story starts with a Muslim. It was a Muslim that gave me a Bible. Out of all people. It was a Muslim that was in jail next to me. So yes, Muslims commit crimes, just like anybody else. That Muslim man was in the cell next to me. He had a New Testament Bible. And I went to this guy and I said, can I read that Bible? I want to know what you're reading. I don't know why he had it, but I do know in jail, they give out free Bibles, at least where I'm from. So maybe this guy got a free Bible. A couple pages were missing because sometimes in the jail cells, they take some of the papers because in those days, the, the papers on the Bibles were like zigzag papers. And if you know what zigzag papers is, smoking papers. You roll up tobacco inside of these papers. So this man had missing Matthew chapter 1 all the way to Matthew chapter 10. So I didn't read the entire New Testament, only from that point to the book of Revelation. So he gave me this New Testament Bible. I said, can I borrow it? And he said, sure. And I took the Bible. I read it. Didn't understand it. But the Holy Spirit fell upon me so strong that I started to see who I was. I realized that I was a sinner. I realized that if I were to die, I would go to hell. And I didn't know what to do except what the Spirit of the Lord was telling me. And I didn't have a scripture to point to. I didn't know John 3.16. I didn't know any of that. I just knew what the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to me. So my, my journey started out prophetic. It started out hearing the voice of God. Now, it wasn't in my ear that someone was whispering. It was in my spirit. And I knew it was something spiritual. 
I knew it because it wasn't normal. Every time I started to think about what the spirit, something inside of me was trying to, or something around me was trying to speak to me, I couldn't, it was a, there was a block in my mind. Every time I thought about God, there was a block. And I got this huge headache. And so I knew that there was something going on because the first time it happened, I was like, okay, I couldn't think about God, I had to rest. So as soon as I thought about God again, something blocked my mind. And I'm here to tell you today that there's a lot of people that want to become Christian that God is speaking to, but their mind is blocked. Their heart is blocked. There's something blocking it. And I believe that those who are Muslim today, those who are atheists, those who are Hindu, those who are agnostic, those who are Buddhist, the reason why they can't come to Jesus is because there's a block. But I believe deep down inside every person, everybody wants to come to Jesus. They just don't know that the answer is in Jesus. They're looking for what Jesus has. But they don't know that it's Jesus that sets the captive free. They just don't know. So I didn't understand everything, but I knew something was going on. The second day, I thought about it, big headache. Third time, thought about it, huge migraine. I don't get migraines. So I was like, why is it that I can think about sin? Why is it that I can do everything that my flesh wants to? I can masturbate, I can do whatever I want to do. But as soon as I think about God, something's blocking me. So I knew I had to press in. I knew that I had to go deeper into whatever this thought was. And there was a voice that said to me, and, and this sounds kind of straight crazy or creepy, but I'm not lying. There was a voice that said to me, you, you, you might as well go back into the world. You might as well just go back. Because I started to see that I, I had so, I didn't, you know, I wasn't paying attention to the, the fact that I had tons of criminal records. I was a robber, I was a car thief, I was a gangster, I was somebody that you didn't want to mess with in my younger days. And the devil, now I know it was the devil or the demons that were living around me, living in me at the time, were trying to discourage me from going forward. The Spirit of the Lord was saying, if you want me, if you want to be saved, you got to repent. You gotta let go of the women. You gotta get go, let go of the drugs. You gotta let go. And if you're here today, I don't care what religion you are. If you're a Muslim here, Christian here, Catholic here, Orthodox, uh, agnostic, atheist, if you want what's good in life, you gotta let go of that which is bad. I mean, it's so simple, like that. If you wanna have peace inside, you can't continue to reject your conscience and go against the things that will only give you freedom. You can't. And it doesn't matter how nice your marriage was, you could have had a beautiful wedding. You know what I'm talking about. You know that when you go home, you have that house, you have that car, but there's still something missing in your heart. You know that no matter how many times you pray, it could be five times a day, you can have your personal prayers, you can go to the mosque on Friday, you know deep down inside that there's something missing in your life. You know it. You know it. I don't even have to convince you. I used to try to convince people that they're sinners. But you know what? You already know. You already know that there's something missing in your life. I knew. I knew. And the devil didn't want me to turn away from these things. He made me feel like there was no hope in my life. But God was saying, listen, I'm calling you to myself. And eternal life isn't cheap. It's not cheap. It costs the blood of my son, Jesus Christ. Now, some people think that they could just go to heaven because they said a Shahada prayer. They said... God, I believe in one God, and Muhammad is the final prophet. They think that this is what makes you go to heaven. Well, do you know what the Bible says in James chapter 2? The Bible says, the devil believes in God, and he trembles. It doesn't take much to say, I believe in God. You can ask the average person going around, do you believe in God? They'll say, yeah. Does that make you right with God? Absolutely not. That's cheap. That's very cheap. I mean, imagine God's holy character, his glory, heaven, being given away just simply because you say with your mouth, I believe in God and I believe in a prophet. Jews have the same problem. 
Jews are taught to say the Shema prayer in Deuteronomy 6 and 4. They said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Bravo. Bravo, you believe in one God. That's good. But saying you believe in one God does not make you right with God. That would cheapen the holiness of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God. Anybody can say I believe in one God. Anybody can say one plus one equals two. Anybody can do that. You know, Jesus Christ walked with people that said they believed in God. And guess what? These same people that prayed a few times a day, by law, by tradition, the same people that did all the Torah rituals that Moses uh, commanded, the same people that wore all the religious garments, all of these people said every single day, I believe in one God. I believe in one God. In fact, Jews do it so much that even on their door, they touch this thing called a mezuzah. If you, if you have Jews in this country, I don't even know. Of course, you must have some. But they touch this thing called the mezuzah, which has the Torah scrolls in it. And they say the Shema prayer, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. They wear a kippah on their head. Every, every day, the men walk outside. And the more religious you are, they have more garments. They wear 613 laws, a, a symbol of it, a 613 strings on their body every single day. Every single day, they wrap these things on their wrists and on their head and they bow down and they pray towards Jerusalem. But if you ask any one of these Jews, if you were to die, are you sure you would be in God's kingdom? If you ask any one of these Muslims, if you were to die, are you sure that Allah would save you, that you would be in paradise, you would be forgiven of your sins? Any single one of them, every single one of them, would say, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I've been asking for 27 years. I've been going from Muslim to Muslim, Jew to Jew. Do you know where you're going to go? Do you know if you're going to be forgiven? And the answer is always the same. It depends on God, what he wants to do. It's in the hands of God. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know what? When you don't know where you're going to go, you always try to find out where you're going to go. At least that's what I do. If I didn't know where I was going to go when I were to die, I would want to know why don't I know. I want to know. And I want to do everything to get there. Now here's what many of the Jews did. The Jews tried to follow the law. Rightfully so. I mean, you want to be a good person, you do what's right. You follow the laws. But even after following the laws, one man came up to Jesus Christ and he said, since I was a young child, I followed the Torah laws. I did everything I could. But he still had the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why was it that no matter how much he worked, and no matter how much he did, he still didn't know where he's gonna go? I'm gonna tell you why. Because doing good things don't guarantee and don't give assurance that your sins are forgiven. Doing good things might make you feel good in front of somebody else. You know, I see so many religious people that come to church or synagogues or mosques and they come and they show their piety, they show how religious they are. But no matter how religious they are, they know the power of their own heart. They know deep down inside they're a sinner. They're a sinner. And the reason why they can't say that Allah, that God, that Elohim is going to bring them into their kingdom is because deep inside all of our conscience, we know the holy character of God. We know deep down inside, nobody told us this. It's just we know. We know that God is perfect and we know that we're not. We know that God is holy and we know that we're not. We know that God is well beyond us and we are far below him. It reminds me of a scripture in the book, in the New Testament, and it says this. It says, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's why no matter what you do, no matter how good you are, 
to somebody else. There's always going to be this sense and this feeling on the inside that it's not good enough. What is good enough, people of Sweden? What is it that it takes for you to have access to God?